to begin this hour with breaking news out of Japan. A Japan Airlines plane burst into flames after it collided with a Japanese Coast Guard aircraft on the runway in Tokyo. This new video shows the moment of impact after the passenger jet landed at the airport just hours ago. And you can see in the video the Japan Airlines plane bursting into flames as it goes down the runway there. Five crew members on the Coast Guard plane were killed. The captain is in critical condition. The crew were preparing to fly to western Japan to try to help with earthquake relief. Nearly 400 passengers and crew were on the Japan Airlines flight. They were able to escape. 17 people reportedly were hurt. Let's bring in CNN's Will Ripley. He joins us live from Tokyo. So, so Will, what's the latest here? What are you learning? Rahel, just within the last couple of hours, the Japanese prime minister sending his condolences to the families of those five Coast Guard crew members. The Coast Guard has a base right next to the Haneda Airport, which sits in the heart of Tokyo, just 15 or 20 minutes drive from where I'm standing right now. It's one of the best airports to fly into in Japan because of its centralized location right on the bay, and you have a beautiful view of the city when you fly in. But on this very busy day, a day that uh, hours after Japan was rocked by a massive earthquake, you had this Coast Guard crew, six people on the plane total, trying to get relief supplies to areas hard hit that desperately need the help. And at the same time, you had a packed Japan Airlines jet that was arriving from Sapporo, which was uh, at, right in the prime of their tourist season up there on the northern Japanese island of Hokkaido. This plane had 367 people on board, including uh, eight children under the age of two. So you had parents with their kids. You had 12 crew members and a fully packed plane. And just before 6 p.m. local time, as this air aircraft was landing on the runway, the Coast Guard aircraft was also on the same runway. How did that happen? That is the focus uh, and going to be the focus of an extensive investigation here in Tokyo, a nation that prides itself on public transportation safety, a nation that's never had a single fatality and decades of running bullet trains at hundreds of miles an hour. And yet somehow, for whatever reason, that reason to be determined, these two aircraft uh, had a very, very violent collision uh, that resulted in a huge fireball. Both of the planes planes were in flames in a matter of seconds and passengers who were on the Japan Airlines jet described black smoke filling the cabin. Uh, they were terrified. Parents, you know, trying to keep their kids as safe as they could, wondering if they were going to make it out alive. A lot of passengers saying they just didn't think that they would, especially when the exit doors, uh, according to the passengers in the rear and middle parts of the aircraft were not working properly. But yet through the front exit doors and there's video of this that's emerging on social media. People, one by one, streamed out of each side of the front of the aircraft, and in just a matter of seconds, all 400 or so people who were on that aircraft made it off alive. 17 of them in the hospital with injuries, but an extraordinary thing, when you look at the video of that plane that was then very quickly fully engulfed in flames, still smoldering on the runway, it took firefighters well over an hour to get the fire under control. Haneda Airport, a very busy hub, of course, shut down right now and likely to be shut down for quite some time as they investigate exactly how this happened, as they look into the cause of this. Uh, but still, the fact that so many people, hundreds of people were able to walk away, even as Japan mourns the loss of these five Coast Guard crew members, it is truly uh, a remarkable moment at the beginning of 2024, which has been very rough for Japan, mm -hmm. uh, given the earthquake first and then this uh, collision on the runway right in the heart of the Japanese capital, Rahel. Yeah, certainly a, just a really dark period for Japan. But as you say, just remarkable that hundreds of people were able to uh, escape those flames. Will Ripley live for us there in Tokyo. Will, thank you. All right with us now, CNN aviation correspondent Pete Montine. And Pete, when you look at those pictures, when you see that plane in flames, it's a near miracle that everyone on board was able to get out. What do you see when you look at it? What I see, and you see the uh, impact there in the first two seconds of that video, is really a wake-up call, not only for aviation in Japan, but also around the world, and especially in the United States. We'll get to that in a second. Japan Airlines Flight 516, this was a Airbus A350, only two years old, uh, came into land on runway 34 right there at Haneda. Uh, what is interesting here is that we know from the track of the plane that this plane was coming into land and the plane behind it had to go around. We do not know the track specifically because there's no data available from that Japan Coast Guard Dash 8 airplane. Six people on board, five of them are dead. We know that the captain of that flight is in critical condition. Uh, what is really striking to me is the uh, com communication and the coordination by the crew 
that made this evacuation so successful. Not just the pilots, but all of the crew, the flight attendants especially. Japan prides itself on efficiency. They got these people out in a very short period of time. There you can see the two airplanes uh, and this big size difference here. A Dash 8 is a much smaller airplane, uh, although it clearly did a lot of damage to the front of that Airbus A350. This is the first time an Airbus A350 has ever experienced a hull loss, meaning the airplane is completely destroyed. What is clear right now is that there was a huge safety failure here in a culture that is incredibly safety conscious. Uh, the Japanese airlines had a spate of accidents in the 80s and 90s. They really cleaned up their act, uh, but is also clear is that this was something where there was an airplane in the wrong place at the wrong time. Uh, and now the question is where the confusion took place. Was it a confusion on the part of air traffic control or was it confusion by one of the crews involved in that Japan Coast Guard flight or in that Japan Airlines flight. So this is something that investigators really need to look at. And of course, they will listen to the air traffic control tapes and the communication there to see if anything was garbled. What is really interesting here in the United States is that there has been incident after incident of airplanes in the wrong place at the wrong time on the surface of an airport. They are known officially as a runway incursion. And we have seen seven of these incidents get so serious that the National Transportation uh, Safety Board has been involved. Uh, JFK, Austin, Boston, Burbank, the list goes on. Uh, this incident uh, really immediately reminds me of the Austin incident where a FedEx flight was coming into land at Austin Bergstrom last February. Uh, Southwest Airlines flight was lined up on the runway ready to take off. It was in uh, bad weather conditions. It was dark. It was before dawn and the FedEx crew caught the error and went around. In this case, of course, it was dark. It was about 547 p.m. local time, although the weather was pretty good. And now the question is whether or not this Japan Airlines flight crew was able to see this plane uh, in front of them and why it was there. So a lot of big questions here and investigators really have their work cut out for them, John. And let's discuss this more and get more analysis on this. Miles O'Brien joining us now. He's a CNN aviation and aerospace analyst. Miles, uh, good to see you today. Unfortunately, uh, certainly a dark day for Japan. But just your initial read, I mean, what do you think happened here? Well, Rahel, you know, there are many, many layers of safety built into the system. And uh, we got down to the absolute uh, last layer here in this one, which was uh, the uh, possibility of an orderly evacuation. And I don't want to, I think we can't underscore enough how successful that evacuation was. Uh, the crew did a great job getting them off. And if any a uh, group of people collectively would listen to a flight crew and do what they're told and follow the rules. It is the people of Japan, anybody who's lived there and knows the culture there, uh, they, they do in fact listen to rules and follow rules. So that was really fantastic. And there was a, a great demonstration uh, of the possibilities there. The other thing to think about here, Rahel, is there have been decades of work on the part of the FAA and other organizations to reduce the flammability of uh, the materials that are inside the cabin of an aircraft. And this is an example here, I think, of the success there, that it holds off uh, potential danger from the toxic fumes and the flames uh, enough time to get passengers off if they listen to the rules. So mm. we can take that away as a, a half full look at it, but uh, clearly there is some uh, dramatic failure in the system here, which will have to be uh, identified and worked on. And, and how do they do that? I mean, once they identify uh, the causes here, walk us through how they officially investigate this. Well, you've got three main parties here. You've got the flight crew aboard the Airbus A350. You have uh, apparently the surviving pilot, the Coast Guard uh, pilot on the Dash 8, the smaller aircraft. And you have the air traffic controllers up there in the control tower. Uh, and each of them will have a story to tell. They'll be interviewed separately. And of course, on top of that, what you have are lots of recordings, recordings of the air traffic control communications and uh, the cockpit voice recorder on the Airbus A350. I'm not sure if that Japanese Coast Guard craft was uh, similarly equipped. We'll have to see about that. But uh, the parties involved, the people who made the decisions in this case are all present and with us still to uh, sort of sort out what happened, uh, where the confusion happened, 
uh, it, as, as Pete pointed out, it was good weather, but it was nighttime. It's the busiest airport in the Pacific Rim in the middle of a terrible disaster. A lot of adrenaline uh, going, I'm sure, with that Coast Guard crew trying to get needed relief supplies up to the stricken region. So there are a lot of subtle human factors here that need to be addressed. Miles mm -hmm. O'Brien, we, uh, we appreciate the time and the insights today. Thank you, Miles. You're welcome, Rahel.